Hey everybody, so you're looking at the living room TV box slim and I've been having some issues with it here lately and I think it's with the saw safe drive. I've noticed for quite some time now, uh, probably <laughs> close to a year, maybe not that long, but for a while now I've noticed at times this thing, especially when you go start it up, it takes forever to start up and to log in and to launch the Chrome browser and kiosk with YouTube on TV. It takes a while and most recently this past week when I was um, just trying to watch TV I had come from work and I turned the TV on and immediately the screen said no boot device found. I'm like oh, okay. Uh, so I shut it off, started back up it loads into Windows, but then a few moments later, the thing just resets, and then it launches Windows again. It just basically went through a boot loop. It'll boot into Windows, log in, and everything, and a few minutes later, it reset. So, combining that with the issues I had previously with this thing, with the SSD getting slow, I'm suspecting maybe the SSD could be going on this thing. So, this will be the first time I've actually had to open this thing up. And it's a little dusty. All that um, ash from the wood stove gets in there. This thing has never been opened, to my knowledge, since I built this thing. It's been, geez, a few years at least since I put this thing together. I got a video up on the channel of me building this thing. And I'll put a card in the right upper right corner where you can go watch that. Yeah, I think we got the right fit this time. See, crazy me even left the uh, <laughs> Torx bit screws in the set-top box. Yes, you are looking at the shell of what used to be a crappy SD DirecTV set-top box. Well, I guess I can't call it crappy because that's what it was around the time it was SD. But, let's see here. To my knowledge, this thing should open up just like a set-top box. Not that you open set-top boxes regularly, but anyway, there we are. And once we get this cover off here... You can see the inner to this thing. There's <laughs> not much in here. It's literally just a, uh, it's just a laptop motherboard out of a 2015 Acer laptop. I took the shell of the laptop, cut it with a pair of tin snips, and glued this thing in here. And I mounted a uh, two and a half inch SATA to M SATA adapter. Because this SSD here I got, it was donated by a viewer back in 2020. And I bought this little adapter to put it in there. And, I mean, for years it worked okay. And while I'm in here, I'm going to probably try to clean this up a little bit. It's getting a little dirty in there. So I'm going to find me a paintbrush. I'll probably do it off camera. But, what we're going to do is I um, went on Amazon and purchased an M.2 SATA SSD. And I do have an M.2 SATA adapter. It's basically a two and a half inch enclosure like this. We'll have to rip this out of here and we'll have to install the replacement. So get a look at this, how I rigged up the power switch on this thing. So on the front here, we got an LED, which I just soldered into the terminals on the motherboard. So the, there's a LED on the motherboard that would normally shine through a power LED on the laptop, like, like above the keyboard. Basically, I just, I just soldered in a regular LED into that in, in, uh, in parallel with the existing LED that's still on the motherboard. And for the power button, I just took that and I soldered it. What it is, I, <clears throat> I tore apart the little 
membrane pad, little tactile switch, tore that apart, and I just soldered in the leads there. <laughs> so, a little bit of redneck engineering, nothing new on this channel. So, we're going to carefully pull this out of here, and it's literally just hot glued in here. So, I'll probably get a razor knife to try to cut that glue. And that's not, that way, we're not like forcibly putting this in here. And unfortunately, of course, this machine is. <laughs> Well, there it just went come loose right there. Unfortunately, this machine is too old for uh, to have M.2. There we are. So installing a replacement shouldn't be too bad. I had this little uh, SATA bridge piece. It basically just bridges SATA power and SATA data from the motherboard connection where the hard drive used to go. And that, is, that way I could just install our hard drive or SSD up here. So, what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, I have a M.2 SATA to 2.5 inch adapter. It is right here. We're going to get our new SSD, which I still got to take out of the Amazon package. We're going to mount it in here, and we're going to try, we're going to attempt to copy the stuff off of this SSD and put it on this SSD that'll be here. And once that's done, we'll reinstall this in here, and hopefully in the future, if I ever have to service the solid state drive on this ever again, it'll be just a matter of taking out the M.2 drive. So, there we go. Okay, so I just got done copying over all the files from the mSATA SSD to the new M.2 SATA SSD. And if you look here in the uh, RAID status, this is what you get when you turn on the system. You can see right here the Dogfish SSD 240GB, that's the mSATA drive. And you can see here it's failing smart. So that drive is in fact dying. So luckily we were able to copy it over before it completely just up and died on us. So there it is right there. And there's a new one in the uh, M.2 to SATA adapter. So we'll go ahead and start this thing up. And we'll go ahead and disconnect that drive, which this machine you can do that's hot swappable. Okay, so I got the new SSD and M.2 to SATA adapter installed in this. The way this is designed is that we can take the cover off and get easy access to the M.2 SATA drive just like we did with the M SATA drive. So there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on this and give it a try. I also off camera cleaned out this fan a little bit. This system does not have a uh, heat pipe core back here. It's just a plate that this fan blows air across. This got one of those Sauron SOCs that run relatively cool and um, are good on power. It's just that Acer decided to take things a little bit further and better engineer their product than HP engineered theirs by actually still including a fan on their motherboard whereas HP well I have a video talking about that I'm not a super big fan of but HP they have what I call the solid state laptop with these low end SOCs they'll, they'll be fanless and I'm just not a real big fan of that if you want to call it that but anyways there we go so hopefully this will improve performance with this little machine it's not super powerful, but it used to be faster, so hopefully this will help make it faster again. And hopefully I won't have the crashing and resetting I was having the other night with it. So we'll get this car back on there and give it a try. Okay, so we got this thing back together and it's back up and running. And it's been working fine tonight. 
I had been watching some stuff on the TV on the uh, course YouTube lean back and things have worked fine system starts up a whole lot faster it never was super fast to begin with considering that crappy Sauron system on chip but it's just good enough for this kind of use uh, startup was a whole lot faster than it was and no crashing or anything like that just simply works so there you have it it was a bad SSD so anyways that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching hey everybody thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo channel if this is your first time please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we get notified new video post please like this video if you enjoyed it leave a comment and share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out also, I have a second channel, that's Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.